Martin today. Oh, How do you like man. that? We've got uh, <laughs> Stu- totally that. Stuart Gilray, who's the CEO of Just Add Water. These are the guys doing all the Odd World HD games that are coming out on PSN. Odd World Strangers Wrath out now on PS3. And a very special guest, Mr. Lauren Lanning, who's the co founder of Odd World Inhabitants and the I guess, creator of the entire Oddworld universe, right? They've blamed it on me. That's right. (laughs) You're sort of a big deal. (laughs) It's a big, big deal. And, uh, well, anyway, guys, thanks for coming in. I'm here with Ray. We wanted to chat about what you guys are working on next. Uh, And there's quite a bit from what I understand, quite a bit. So we're working on now. We like like to keep busy. If you don't keep busy, then what's the point? You know, we've got, how many projects have we got on the go now? Two, three? I don't know. You just well, keep asking for more money. <laughs> don't even go there. <laughs> keep making your money, man. Um, so, so what is making it money right now? What's making money right now? Strangers Wrath PS3 HD, um, which we released in December. Cool. So that's done quite well for us. And then we're about to release in the next three weeks, or by the end of May, basically, the PS3 Strangers Wrath update with 3D TV support, move support, and a whole bunch of other little things as well. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's great. That's something I know you've been talking about from yeah. day one, but you decided to emphasize getting the game out there. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, all hands up, and Lauren knows this, you know, we were late getting to the gate, so we decided to not do the 3D TV from day one and the move support from day one and hold it back to do an update so we get maybe get a little extra sales spike, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's working out for us. I mean, we wanted to get originally out in April, but it's going to be out, you know, end of May. Cool. It's actually in QA right now, so... Fingers crossed it comes out. Now, how, what does move support add to the game? I mean, I'm just sort of curious. I haven't tried this out yet, obviously. But yeah. I, I, what, what's it like and how you know it's, how do it, controls work? Well, here's, here's the thing. is 90% of the games, which are shooter-esque games with move support, are all first-person only. Strange, of course, is third and first-person only. So we had to come up with a, a system which worked for both styles of, of camera view. So you know, when you're in first-person, it is kind of like kill zone and, and resistance and stuff. You know, you're direct controlling where you're pointing at. But in third-person, you're... You're moving a reticle around the screen where strangers aiming towards when he sh- when he runs and stuff and moves through, and it works really well. We had um, a couple of guys do some user testing for us, and first thing I said was the 3D was the best 3D this 3D they'd seen on a PS3 title, and I was like, yeah, it works. That's awesome. Um, and then the second thing I said was the move stuff. It doesn't seem unnatural. Which, you know, if, if they're saying that, it's, it's, um, makes me happy. Well, yeah. like, it's it's funny you the third that. thing they said is we forgot to tell you we're blind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's yeah. funny you mentioned that. I think the key word with move support is natural. I remember playing yeah, yeah. games like Resistance 3 and Killzo. It's, it just, just feels natural. It, it yeah. looks like it was built from the ground up just for move. Yeah, I mean, the guy we, we got to do this is actually in the States in Wisconsin. We, we asked him to do it because he managed to finish Killzone with 3D and move. That's the best way to play. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I thought the best person to get to try this who knows this stuff here you go. <laughs> uh, and he, he spent like 15 hours across the weekend three weeks ago and just said, yeah, th- th- it works really well. Is there anything that he fine-tuned that he saw that kill zone? We, we did a couple of tiny little okay. tweaks because, I mean, again, when we were doing the PS3 version with the normal controls, we had originally the, the fire buttons because you'd left and right fire. We had it on L2 and R2, and he said, no, oh, yeah. that's bad. Now, don't do that. R1, R2. So yeah. we, we did that. Um, so another thing he's kind of mentioned with the move stuff is, we weren't really utilizing the move button, right? So we 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 are now. Right, you know, cool. A couple of tweaks like that, but for the most part, you know, if you had to put it in a scale, point ninety percent, he said it was fine. Ten percent with little 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 tweaks and stuff. Is there anything special with the telephoto with the sniper scope? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, on, no. To, <laughs> compared to the Vita version, which has, yeah. You know. Oh, now now yeah, what, yeah. what was that? I heard a reference there. Yeah, Vita, Vita version of I'll Oddworld s- Stranger's Wrath. Yes. And I just got a sneak peek, very early build, but yep. already very promising. Tell me what the philosophy is for getting this game is already out on PS3 and getting it on PS Vita. Like, what's your approach? Well, I mean, the ri- well, a little bit of history. The original thing was that Sony Europe asked us to do it, you know, as close to launch as we could do. And we thought, yeah, we can do that for you. So it was always in our, our game plan for the past 16 months to do it for Vita. Um, so we started on it you know, a few weeks back. Uh, and it's the game, the game it stands up pretty well as is. Let's just emphasize and make it feel kind of natural. So things like, you know, you, you go first person to third person by double, t- you know, using two taps in the front screen. Oh, both thumbs on yeah. the front screen. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Because, that's cool. Yeah, because, because we, there isn't enough buttons, real buttons, to, to not do that. So, you know, that was one thing. And then you touch the back sc- uh, panel to do the punches or, or the spins and stuff ah. when you're in third person mode or first person you punch with it. Um, and it felt kind of just, just, just logical. I think I guess natural is the word that comes up again, yeah. to do it that way. And it's worked well. Another thing we've done with the sniper scope is on the PS3 and the previous versions of the game, you had literally two distances. You had far away, not so far away, then 
reset to normal view. So on the Vita version, you actually pinch the screen in and out, and it dynamically goes in and out with your pinch. Cool. So it's not just prefix positions. Very cool. That's now, awesome. Now, you mentioned that you have just started on this a couple of weeks ago. Five and here weeks. I am, and I'm playing yeah. a, a version that's very early, but yeah. looks fantastic look fantastic already. Yeah, I mean, we, we're, we started five, five and a half weeks ago on it, and the guy who's doing it has never touched a Vita before. He literally plugged it in and went, oh, I'm going to re- read the documentation. He's probably spent like half a week reading documentation, and then the next week he already had code running. Wow. He was surprised how quickly he managed to get bits up and running. Cool. You know, the first thing we saw was just the loading screens, you know, because it's two-dimensional stuff pretty much. There's little things, nothing really going on. Mm-hmm. Then we got you know, the basic world rendered. But the speed of that going through from nothing to having something was like 10 days tops. Wow. But, you know, it's, it, the, the version is, as it is, you know, we're, say, five weeks into it. We think we'll be a, a decent beta in about four weeks. Wow. Just prior to E3. So, so the, the question I think a lot of people are going to be asking then, given yeah. all of this, is what are you sort of targeting as a release time frame here? I won't pin you down on what day it's coming out because that stuff gets figured out pretty yeah, late I in mean, the process. I will. Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, late June. Late June. Wow. That's, that's, that's my intention. Okay. Um, the QA might say no. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's the plan anyway. So Oddworld Stranger's Wrath, that's not the only thing you guys are working on, right? Yeah. I mean, what can you, what can you tell us about what's next? Well, what still current was, as opposed to next, we're working on Munch's Odyssey HD, which is probably, you know, four weeks from going to QA. Wow. So, so that's, that's uh, also right Also the imminent. Yeah, I mean, we're aiming for uh, June release on PS3. That's now, awesome. that's a title I never played. I did play Oddworld yeah. Stranger's Wrath. I never played that one. So uh, that was the PlayStation 1? That no, was, that was the, the, the PS2. other side. That oh, was the other side. Oh, the dark the re- side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. yes. Sorry, that was people up was north. Release, the release title on the Xbox One. Yes, so yes. So we helped launch that. I, so I remember it was the release title we built with no, with no dev kits. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a crazy, crazy yeah. day. So what's the philosophy there to, to bring that now to well, PS3 and, and Vita? Yeah. I mean, the, the reason being is it's pretty simple. That when I started talking to Lauren before about let's kick this off again, we kind of thought, you know, I mean, in fact, the very first thing that came out is when we did our stage one submission for Stranger's Wrath in two, late, oh, mid-2010. Um, Lauren said to me, he says, do you think PlayStation will really want us back on their platform again? I said, yeah, of course they will. And he, said, it'll be, and he, he literally said it would be great to be back home again. And I thought, that, that was kind of cool. So, you know, and oh, he's, he's crying. Welcome back to the source. Shit, <laughs> Welcome back yeah. to the source. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, we kind of thought when we came to talking about Munch, we only started speaking about April last year about doing Munch at some point. And the, the, the premise was literally to get, let's have all the games back on PlayStation again. Why leave one out? Right. You know, so it's, yeah, it's a much older game. It's 11 years old right now from the original release. Um, so it's not going to be as... I won't say it's not going to be as polished as, as Stranger, but it's a different. It's different technology. It's you know, it's, it's a different era of gaming. Yeah, really. exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's going to be a slightly cheaper price than um, Stranger was. Maybe about ten dollars. Is there a moment of Zen where you're looking back at that and saying, "What the hell were we thinking? Like, what when we made this game?" <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, I didn't make the original. Lauren did. Uh, but you know, <laughs> Lauren, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> right? it, it's actually a great question. But the, uh, at the time, you know, Microsoft was identifying we were we were signing up as first party Microsoft. And Microsoft was identifying that the title to kill that was going to be their biggest problem was Mario. <laughs> right? You got to imagine, right? Good luck like, with that. Like, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, how much? Oh, we'll try. And, <laughs> and, you know, so w- when you look at how that curve was happening and what was, what was taking place with technology, I mean, it was, that was the game that almost killed me. You know? So then, you know, we, we go forward, right? And you had asked a question before, you know, on, on the PlayStation, what's happening? I never, I never expected that that they would, PSN would start releasing PSX titles. Yes, right? and when that huge happened, huge demand for it though, yeah. huge oh, demand. There always has been. Yeah, there has always been right, and so this this idea of reverse compatibility. But once you hit the processing power, the you know, and you really got into the PS3, and then all of a sudden PS1 titles are there. What that did, what I saw that that did was that connected multi generations of gamers. Yep. Right. Yep. And what that did was that people. That title that I loved, I can now play with my kid, right? And that, and to me, that changed. It was like, wow, I did not expect Sony to to get that, you know, right. you know, because it's just not a part of the 
consumer electronic manufacturer's sort of mindset, right? We need the latest, greatest thing to push the box. Well, you can do that, but that doesn't mean you have to sacrifice all your old things. You know, just because a Blu-ray player came out, I'm not going to watch old movies that aren't in Blu-ray yeah. because there's Blu-ray? That was a great movie. I want to watch it. And the same goes for gaming, right? So it really put sort of the PSN store, to me, put it back into this is really an entertainment company, mm-hmm. and this is about the history of gaming. Yes. This isn't just trying to pimp our latest box. Yeah, and it's a catalog, right? It's and a, it's a huge catalog. huge catalog. So when, you know, so we had started with digital distribution getting on Steam, on the, on the PC with the Abe games, and then we said, wow, we can get them, really? Like, really? Abe can be playing on people that own PS3s? I mean, that to me was like, there was a comment I made to Larry Shapiro back at CAA years ago, and he goes, Lauren, we, you know, we should do this. And I said, and he was talking about these things we should do with those games. I go, Larry, there's something you got to realize, okay? <laughs> this industry is completely disposable. Right? It's not recyclable. It's disposable. You build a game, and in five years, no one's going to have a device in their home to play that game yep. again. Mm-hmm. You know, and so maybe this is nine years ago. You know, and, it, and the world has changed that much where you're going, if that was great back in the day, why isn't that available to the players today? So when that was happening, we saw, okay, we can get the Abe games on there. We said, let's get Munch over the PS3. Let's get Abe over the PS3. Let's get our library onto PSN, right? And then... Let's, because we're a self-publisher now. I mean, they're the developer. We're we're publishing, and that's that's a PSN thing. I mean, that's that's yeah. only on PSN as far yeah. as I'm aware. That's now. right. That's right. So I mean, w- so you talk about little guys. You know, it doesn't get much littler, right? Mm-hmm. We're we're cutting the checks and we're publishing. We couldn't have done that in the box product game. Uh, with the way this new landscape's going, it's like, oh, so you know, we get the games up and then we go, well, let's do an HD version. Let's let's step into this let's see how the audience is responding let's let's see the support we can get you know and let's let's fund it intelligently but re- really let's think about this as a true indie right so we were lucky in that we were able to have triple a titles in our library that mm-hmm. we still own, you know controlled and we were able to sort of bring those out like an indie publisher and that that was a really unique space That's and that wouldn't cool. be possible unless of yeah. the psn yeah. but, but the nice thing is we did, you know for a lot of because <coughs> i I'm, i've publicly said a few times i'm a f- ticked off with a lot of the HD remakes. <laughs> they could have just gone, code port, there you go, yeah, job done. Right, and it's right. like, yeah. Sharpie yeah. the edge level three, right. That, yeah. Then people buy the game, go, yeah, and, and yeah, the company's making a lot of money out of it, and then yeah. people go, that was really bad. Yeah. You know, and we've, co- we've actually a couple of articles past weekend that they reviewed one of the other ones from another company I won't mention because I'm speaking to them right now. Um, the, the, the piece was said, oh, if only these guys did as much coverage as I Water did in Stranger's Wrath HD because that huh. is how you do an HD remake. And, and I was like, yeah, I, I thank you for that. I agree entirely. Yep. You guys, you guys kind of set the bar, I think, on that. And it's a great opportunity for YouTube because you guys obviously care a lot about these mm-hmm. games. Lauren, I know this is like, these are your brain children and you, you have this opportunity now to make sort of the definitive version of the game, you know, something that will be around. It's not disposable now. Now it's on PSN. It's going to be around. That was the shock. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then uh, it, it, it goes to that sort of the, the the focus of an indie, the focus of being a little guy, because we we did care, right? We cared a lot, and I think that's that's something that our fans always appreciated. Was you go if we were in a big cookie, cut, uh, cookie cutter, you know, assembly line, a lot of the decisions that we made would not be there. You know, if we were in a bigger company, it would have been hard to make a lot of these crazy decisions. Uh, and but in the in the remakes, and we go to the HD to the to Jaw, that was like a fresh new title. Right, even though they had played it, but they were fans about it. So they, they didn't treat that like, oh, we have this, you know, we're just doing this derivative to make a buck. They treated it like, I love this game. How great can we make it look? Mm-hmm. What can we do to make it play better? What can we do to, you know, engage it to a wider, uh, expose it to a wider audience, and offer more, you know, ranges of difficulty, like you know, achievements, uh, the, the basic things that they did. But they, the love is in there. And there's a reason. It's a cultural reason, right? So we always looked at, you, you mentioned the music industry. We always looked at, and I used to talk to people at Oddworld. I'd go, look, this is not really like working at a dank game developer. This is more like joining a band. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And yep. You're absolutely <laughs> so, right. You know, we'll be on the roof at night, but we're also going to be, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're out to just make killer stuff for the audience. It's funny you said right? band, not family, but band's a better uh, yeah. analogy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Family to me was like, I don't give a shit about family. <laughs> <laughs> Five. about a band. You know, let's go party. Let's get some girls. Let's have fun. Ditto. You know? Ditto. And, then you're in the, and then you're in the game industry and you're working around the clock and never do that. But yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, you have to come back briefly about saying about putting care and, and extra love into the games. The things that we did, not just updating the textures, we wanted to go back and add, add extra Easter eggs and stuff. Cool. So like we, trophy we, support, I'm sure. Well, yeah, trophy yeah. support. Yeah, we put 36 trophies in, including platinum. Yeah. Mm. Someone said to me, why are you doing platinum? You're a PSN. Yeah, but it's a large scope game. Yep. 
means you get a trophy. People, platinum. people love those platinums. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting a theme here is that you guys are not at all done with Oddworld. I mean, no, it doesn't sound like these two are going to be in. If I had to take a guess, yeah, correct. I mean, we've already kind of announced we're doing Abe's Odyssey HD, which is people say you're just remaking the first game. Well, we're not, we're not porting, converting the first game like we have done with Stranger Munch. We're doing a complete reboot. You know, it's we're starting off pretty much nothing. Wow, we're scrolling three D engine physics. You know, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And that's a classic. I mean, that yeah. was that was an absolute classic on the first. Yeah, the exactly. Two point five D. You know, we've kind of taken a, a, a small leaf out of the Bionic Commander rearm book um, because you know, the, the games have little issues, but they look fantastic. Mm-hmm. So we're doing the same thing with with Abe basically. And the thing that I've always wanted to do, which I've been bugging a mutual friend of of, of Lorne Eyes for about eight nine years. I've kept saying to our friend Danny, tell Lorna we, he's got to remake Abe. And he's like, oh, he doesn't care about games anymore. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, you know that was true for a short it's while. entirely true. No, <laughs> I'd like to explain on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you're all right. Um, but, you know, disillusion. There you go. Okay. Well, so, you know. $25 million budget. So yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, you know, we, we, uh, t- when I said to Lorna, what was it, t- November 2010, I wanted to do it. And he's like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can do it. Yeah, <laughs> do it, do it. I did. I did want to touch on one thing. I mean, do you think we, we're doing all these, re, you know, these reboots and and remaking these games? Which I'm, if if it's done well, I think a remake can be very valuable. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, and a great way to maintain a game's quality over time. But I, is is there a chance that we're going to see a new tale set in Oddworld someday? I mean, is that is that possible? Well, here, here's here's the the plan. We'll see how the plan goes. Well, if you right. guys glance at each other. The, the, plan, <laughs> the plan the plan has been, and and the fact is, it would not be possible if not for digital distribution. Right? Period. It just wouldn't be possible. But the plan is, can we build his company and fund at at and take reasonable risks, right, and increase the bet each time? And that's what we've been doing. Yeah. So it started off with very simple, you know, uh, relatively simple conversions. Uh, saturate the platforms, get the presence out there, see what the audience is doing, respond, fix, you know, really make them understand that we're listening, right? And, that, and they've been doing a good job of that. Then, as that, if, if that is working, then there should be rewards that are coming in. That, our agreement is the rewards that are coming in are going back into development. And so, and so <laughs> I have to say that, that that plan is working out very well. But yeah. a lot of the reason it's working out very well is because the characters involved – Right, their passion for the property, mm-hmm. their dedication to making sure that it stays true to what the idea of it was, and now we're opening up the coffers on a on budgets more and b on okay, let's start looking at how we complete that quintology. Yeah, but how much money is that going to take? How do we do that intelligently? Yeah, how do we, how do we not do it stupidly and, and kill take our, out a bunch of loans essentially? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So we're really self financing. Yeah, that, yeah. You know? And we've been re- self financing the sort of revitalization back up, and it's yeah. been working. You know, and the audience of that is increasing. And w- the, the super exciting thing that I see is that people who grew up with Abe are excited to turn their kids on to yep. Oddworld. And that is creating a new sort of perpetuation. So I feel that with the continued support of the audience, with the uh, sustain, sustaining the quality, these guys got some hard knocks when they first released. I was like, be careful. <laughs> the audience is going to eat you if they, they have yeah. certain expectations. That'll be the PC they market. Got, they got some hard knocks. He had a heart attack. And then... Yeah. They they adapted quickly. They responded yeah. quickly. That, yeah. that feedback loop, I think, is important. I yeah, mean, yeah. We work in the Critical. social media team. We're on the social media team, so we know this very well. And it's it's difficult sometimes. Uh, sometimes the, 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 the truth isn't always uh, super pleasant, or sometimes <laughs> there's no answers. I mean, yep. uh, you know, yeah. it, it, when you have big companies, it's hard. You know, it's, it's difficult. There's a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the, the feedback loop, I think, is really important. Uh, yeah. and, and digital is what has facilitated that. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be possible in, in more of a yeah. retail no, type environment. It wouldn't. It's still, you can still do it, but digital really – uh, opens up the full potential. It's because it's instant. Yeah. yeah. And what you also have is you have the the in, the ecosystem of your brand has legs, right? So any new thing that comes out, it gives some boost to the old sales. Yep. It, re- it really does, right? Because they haven't lost their place on the shelf. Yep. They're not they're gone st- in the they're trash not, or whatever. They're not gone. Right? They're yeah. pushed out. You know, I mean, every every retailer, every distributor has to deal with their own realities, and we don't always like what they are. But here, we can say, if that whole library's up and we keep making, making people happy, then they are have access to that old library, and that continues to allow us to make new games. Yeah. So one of the lessons I've learned is don't overpromise to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> we want to go into that. But uh, in that, it's, there's a lot of opportunity. What I said is true in terms of part of the plan was can they get to the point where they're co-financing? Yeah. That part of the plan is manifesting. 
And so then we'll have shared risk. <laughs> and you got you got a marriage. You got a marriage. We, we, we got a marriage. And these, guys, these guys have been great. I mean, I love that team. I love the passion they bring to it. Yep. And I love how how little attention in the efforts they've gone on. I mean, some of it's been a, a litmus test for myself, right? The best people I like working with is the people that, that we agree conceptually and go away and come back and be like, you did it, right? <laughs> if I have to take them to it, I don't know if they can do it or not, yeah. right? right? I, I'll get the end result, but I don't know what happens when I'm not around. Yeah. And with these guys, great things happen when you're not around. That's awesome. And that is awesome. So Very cool. Very good wonderful. stuff. Well, and Welcome uh, back. Yeah, welcome, <laughs> yeah. welcome Ten back. 10 years, 11 years in the making. And, and <laughs> a lot of Oddworld coming to PSN soon. Guys, I want to thank you for yeah. coming in. Lauren, are you on Twitter? Uh, it's under diabolic, uh, Diabiblical. Diabiblical. You've not, you hardly, I think you've done like 34 Tweets in the, like two years. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I, tw- I you know I followed a couple people and I was like, ah! you know, like <laughs> <laughs> avalanche of stuff. And then I'm like, at least on Facebook I see the pictures. Anyway, and and Stuart, you're on Twitter as yeah. well. What's your what's your Twitter? Uh, Stuart Gilray, one word. There you go. Uh, which is spelled S T E W A R T Gilray because me spelled U A like your guy in reception. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful guys, thanks for coming in. Uh,